let's talk about how we reconstruct ancient monuments. We're in the heart of ancient Rome in the form of Trajan, in the shadow of the Column of Trajan, where a new project is taking shape. Archaeologists and architects use a procedure called anastolosis, which is from the ancient Greek, and it means to re-erect a building again. And how do they do this? They fill in the missing pieces with modern material. What you see is the re-erection of columns, and this is called anastolosis. We see many examples of anastolosis, where you see the uh, missing parts of the columns are made with brick. So you get a distinction between what's modern and what's not. I'm gonna take a closer look, that's Egyptian granite. And over here, we get a different kind of marble, Cipollino marble from Greece. This kind of striated uh, greens that makes it look kind of like a peeled onion, hence the name by the Italians, Cipollino. And you can see then the rest, what's missing is made in brick. So the idea again is we have two different kinds of marble, two different kinds of uh, anastolosis or reconstruction, filling in the missing parts in this case with brick. It's a beautiful, beautiful example that allows us to distinguish what's ancient and what's not. But because there are two different kinds of stones here, granite and Cipollino marble, the hypothesis was that this was the second story or the second order, because that's generally how it works. So for a very long time, archaeologists have recognized, have hypothesized that these remains of the Cipollino columns indeed belong to the second story. But no one ever attempted to place these reconstructed columns on top of the granite columns of the first story. Until now, that's the new project, and it's quite gutsy. What you can see is there's a whole lot of anastolosis, most of these columns here are recomposed with a lot of brick. There isn't that much of the original marble in place. But we can see other examples of successful anastolosis projects in the city of Rome, like here in the Forum of Caesar, reconstructed in the time of Trajan. These columns were re-erected in the fascist era excavations. And the real standout besides the colonnades are the columns of the magnificent temple of Venus Genetrix, again, reconstructed in the time of Trajan. And now we have, because of these re-erected columns and part of the entablature, a sense of how magnificent it once was, how large it once was. We can go to the theater of Marcellus, dating to the time of Augustus, and the columns in front belong to the temple of Apollo Socianus. So we have an archeological park, heavily restored, heavily rebuilt with anastolosis again in the fascist era. And over here, they're using a lot of tuff to recreate what is missing. Right here in the trenches, we're just below the magnificent theater of Marcellus with this fascist era reconstruction. We can put in that category there of anastolosis to shore up this end of what's preserved of the theater of Marcellus. And right across the way, the re-erected columns of the Temple of Apollo Sociana. So you can see quite clearly the duller, darker concrete sections versus the original blocks of Carrara marble. So we have two fantastic examples of anastolosis right here in the heart of ancient Rome. And again, it's a hard act to follow today. So when we take a look at the reconstruction here of the Temple of Apollo Socianus, these columns weren't found in this corner. They've been amalgamated together. There's a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of creativity with academic study and research to create this final ensemble piece. We can turn to the very successful reconstruction of the Arch of Titus. The exterior is made of travertine stone. The only original part of pentelic marble is in the interior arch. It is considered one of the greatest reconstructed monuments. We can also turn to the Temple of Venus in Rome. Here we are inside the cella of the temple with these beautifully restored, reconstructed porphyry columns on the interior. And on the exterior, we can walk along and see these re-erected columns of the outer colonnade of the Temple of Venus in Rome. And of course, we get the view of the Colosseum. It too had its facade famously reconstructed in part in the early 19th century. A more recent project of the 21st century, we have the Forum of Peace, 
the re-erection of seven column of Aswan granite right next to the Roman Forum. And going abroad, probably the most famous restored monument from antiquity in the ancient Roman times is the Library of Celsus of the 2nd century AD. It's a magnificent, magnificent project conducted between 1970 and 1978. It looks almost new in the context of Ephesus. And from behind, you can see just how elaborate and impressive this Anasolosis project truly is. Let's go back to Rome. Let's go into the heart of Imperial Rome, into the Forum of Trajan. This was the greatest Imperial Forum space ever constructed, with the piazza, with the Temple of Divine Trajan, with the Column of Trajan, and of course the real standout feature was the Basilica Ulpia, the greatest basilica in 2nd century AD Rome. And it was magnificent, 600 Roman feet by 200 Roman feet, that's 176 meters by 59 meters, and it was beautifully presented in many restoration studies over the centuries. This truly was a standout basilica and a model for all over the empire. We see from this reconstruction that the first story was of granite columns with a height of 36 Roman feet, and the second story, the order was made of Cipollino marble with an order of 30 Roman feet, and a full height of almost 100 Roman feet, about 30 meters, with gilded bronze roof tiles. So I'm standing here at the remains of the Basilica Ulpia, and you see a lot of scaffolding up here. So what's happening is you're having the erection of the second story, the second colonnade for the interior nave of the Basilica Ulpia. Now this process of re-erection is called anastolosis. It's a Greek term, and we use it for archaeological sites. And there are plenty of successful examples of anastolosis in Rome. I like to look at uh, the columns of the Temple of Apollo Socianus, for example, as a successful example of the re-erection uh, of columns, even the colonnades here for the Basilica Ulpia, or the ones over on the Temple of Venus Genetrix in the Forum of Caesar. In order to have successful anastolosis, you have to start with the fundamental fact that you have enough of the original material then you're filling in the missing gaps with something else. It can be travertine stone, it can be marble itself, it can be brickwork. So we have many examples of this in the city of Rome. This project right here, looking at the scientific studies, at least the preliminary ones, I do recall that in the uh, original analysis, scientific analysis of the archeological remains, there was some question as to whether or not they had enough archeological material that they could ascertain with certainty that it belonged to the upper uh, stories, which would have been a, a smaller uh, order of column. So it looks like in the end they have resolved that because they've moved forward with the project and the Anasolosis project right here is on its way towards conclusion. As you can see from this vantage point, it's forever going to affect our view of Trajan's column in the distance. So we'll have to see in the end what the final project is going to look like, but it definitely is going to give us a better sense of the volume of the space, of the size of the Basilica Ulpia. Keep in mind that with the excavations here, uh, you only have about one third of the length of this 600 foot long uh, basilica, which extends all the way towards the Vittoriano Monument, which extends all the way toward this palace right over here. The remains of the Basilica Ulpia have been revealed underneath that building in recent times. So we'll see what the final conclusion is going to be, but anastolosis is a, is a procedure, it's an action that is highly scrutinized, both by the academic world and by the public, and we'll have to ultimately see what the verdict is going to be. All right, here in this view, we see the scaffolding has been taken off, and now we're getting a much better view as to what that second story actually looked like restored, clean fragments of Cipollino marble are very visible here in the Basilica Upia in the form of Trajan. There are so many things that we can learn from ancient Rome by studying its monuments, by learning about the protagonists of history. Join us for Ancient Rome Live. We give free lectures every month. We've got master class at the end of each month. Follow us on social media and be sure to sign up for the newsletter ancientromelive.org.